Our pregame is presented by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years, and we are proud to call this our home. Good evening and welcome to the Stro Center, where tonight is Division IV Regional Championship Night, the Crestview Knights and the Marion Local Flyers. My name is Mark Schein, alongside Jerry Snodgrass. Jerry, in my mind, it's the hardest game to win, regional final. You know it is, because you won, there are trophies presented here. Yes. And all year long, you talk about, especially at the start of the tournament, let's get to Dayton. That puts all the more pressure on this game. Our keys to the game are presented by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima for over 100 years. How about the Crestview Knights? Well, first of all, I love what Coach Etzler wants to do as a key number one. Wants to really make it tough for Hess to get the ball. Take them out of their rhythm, and I think that's critical about getting the ball inside, so that's a big point. Two, he, they have to handle their full court pressure. It's uh, really good, whether it's a diamond, whether it's one, two, two, and thirdly, like everyone, you gotta win the boards. And the key part of that is, uh, Crestview did so well with that in their regional semifinal game. All right, we got the Marion local Flyers. How about the keys to them? Well, take away the easy baskets, and Crestview's very capable of it. Two, like everybody, control the boards. They've got the bigs to do it. They need to do it. And three, they need to shoot well. And I love what Coach Gunnar Miller said. They didn't do that very well a year ago up here, so they've got to shoot the ball well. It is regional championship night in Division Four. Starting laps coming up right after this. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to the Stroh Center here on the campus of Bowling Green State University. The 23 and 3 Crestview Knights, the 24 and the 22 and 4 Marion Local Flyers. Mark Schein, Jerry Snodgrass, here's our officials. Some guys you know pretty well, Jerry. Yes, I do. And in fact, uh, Scott Yancey uh, and Jamie Palumbo and uh, Don Dorbert, uh, Scott, was actually a seventh grade basketball player for me in my days at Ridgedale. How about that? That's about a few years ago, perhaps. Yeah, well, uh, yeah don't show him real close <laughs> to show how old he is now. Great officials, by the way. That's a right. very good group. Let's put some team info up on the board. Here are the starting lineup for the Crestview Knights. Gavin Etzler averages a little better than 10 points a game, almost 11 per game. He's a 6'3 uh, junior. Uh, number five, Mitch Temple, 6'2 senior at 9.4. Carson Hunter wears number 10. He's a 6'3 senior. He averages six a game and five rebounds. Nate Lichty wears number 25. He's a 6'2 senior at 12, 10.4. And 33 is Ren Sheets, 6'6 sophomore, 10.5 points per game and 6.1 rebounds for him. The Flyers, number four, Luke Pullman, 6'0 senior at 6.1 points per game. Jaden Wesher wears number 11, 6'2 senior, 12.2. Number 12, Tate Hess, 6'2 senior, nine points a game, six assists. 23 is Austin Niekamp, 6'8", sophomore, 8.4, 5.8 rebounds. And Jack Kanapke, 6'9", junior at 13 points and eight boards for him. As we said a moment ago, Crestview, Doug Etzler's team, 23-3. and three. And from the Northwest Conference, and they were a dagger from Spencer away from winning that conference this year. And very local, Kirk Gunnabiller's team. They were our number seven ranking in the Martin RPI. They were 22 and four. They won the Midwest Athletic Conference with an eight and one record this year. Here's the way the brackets look. Playing into this regional championship game, you can see victories that took place here on uh, Tuesday night. Marion Loke over Patrick Henry, Crestview over Mohawk. And the winner of this will then move on down to uh, Dayton they will play on the 17th. Here's the state championship and how it breaks down. Jackson Center and Rushi playing this evening. That will air on WOSN this weekend as well. Dalton Richmond Heights. And you can see the winner of this against Northside Christians and Berlin Highlands on Thursday. Next week, uh, WSN will put together a highlight package for you to see each night. Thursday, Friday, and or Friday night, isn't it, Jerry? We play Friday, Saturday, Sunday now. Yes, it is. Yes, and, it is. You know, you look now at, you know, it's interesting to look at uh, this particular bracket, and in the regional final, or excuse me, in the regional tournament here, every one of those were the respective number one seeds out of their district tournament. How about that? That's a pretty interesting statistic that came up. Crestview comes in, they average about 57 and a half points per game. They give up 43 and a half. Kirk Gullimiller's team, they average 53.1. They give up 42.2 points per game. And 
in our pregame, I said that uh, Gavin Etzler was a junior, and he is a senior. My mistake on that. Oh, the looking across the floor, grandfather Ray, Gavin's yes. hey. father, and uh, Doug's uh, well, you know, great grandfather and father. Yep. You know, when I see him, I don't know if you and some of our viewers came across the Lima News, Bob Sager's yes. article about the sweet spot of coaching. Yep. And how awesome that was. You're referencing, you know, before the three-point shot, before right. social media, the true, we like to say it, the yeah. true parts of, you know, the, the years of coaching. And every time I see uh, uh, Coach Etzler and some of those others, that's all I think about, the sweet spot of coaching. Well, you know, the other part of that, he and Frank Minnick coached their middle school teams forever. And what, what two better guys, Frank's over there sitting beside with Ray as well, what two better guys from a basketball standpoint, but more importantly from a man standpoint, have coaching your sons yeah, in middle school. From both sides of that, yes. from being the head coaching side to being a parent to being a player, does it get any better than that? The fundamentals of basketball being taught, you know, in the finest way possible. We have, let's take a break. We're gonna come back with the opening tip right after this. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Our premier sponsor for the very local community is OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting and standing and assembly needs, call OPAC. And our first quarter is sponsored by Home and Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, a member of the Wayne Insurance Group, with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles. Opening tip controlled by the American Local Flyers. Here's Tate Hess. You know, I mentioned in the pregame, you know, the keys of, you know, making it uncomfortable for Tate Hess. And I really think that is a key, a big key. Makes it just that much harder to get that ball inside. It's Kanapke inside, but the ball is kicked loose. And uh, Jerry, I've said it many times as the season has gone along, Tate Hess might be the most improved player I have seen from day one to where we're at right now. He and perhaps Erford at Ottawa Glendorf, they just make continually make significant progress. And he has become a real show runner, and Tate Hess is a great on-ball defender. Here he yeah. is with the basketball. And isn't it how important those players are? I know fans often look at scoring. Three ball. Oh, see there. Luke Pullman lights the lamp from the corner. It's three for the Flyers. That's an ultimate outdoor three-point field goal this evening. Appreciate their sponsorship as well. Very local as is normal into their man-to-man -man set. This is Mitch Temple with the basketball. Here's Etzler. You know, and I, I think obviously both teams do play hard, but that's one thing that Crestview just for years and years it's ingrained in them to just play hard, just exceed your expectations. Simple ball fake and threw the ball to Mesher in the corner. Here comes Jade Mesher. Hetzler has him, and now Hess. Backdoor cut. I think Kanapke and Niekamp kind of didn't get on the same page. And Ball went out of their hands. I, yeah, I, I think uh, Austin Niekamp was going to be open on that, actually, but I think you're right. It was just a little bit of mix-up there. Mitch Temple averages nine points a game, four rebounds, four assists. He wears number five for the blue team. Comes off the screen. This is Etzler. Temple looking inside. And now they've got Sheets posted up. He's got... Kanapke on his back, and that ball's kicked out of bounds. That would be an interesting matchup on the inside, you know. Again, we always talk about the two bigs for Marion Local, but, you know, of course, too, you know, Ren Sheets only a sophomore, but 6'6 in his own right. Carson Hunter inside, ball fake. His shot doesn't go. Austin Niekamp rebounds. Here's Mesher ahead of the pack. Great patience, really, by Mary Local. You know, not take an unfor or a forced shot, bring it back out, go to their strengths. Here's Pullman. Nick Lichty at 6'2", matched up inside with Austin Niekamp at 6'8 plus. Pullman's going to get another three look. He's got a second one. 33-point field goals on the year for him as he nails an ultimate outdoor Ohio three-point field goal. We're going to travel. Well, you know, too, here's a young man that's, you know, shooting 37% uh, on the year from three-point line. But, you know, at the same time, when you're a coach, you just want those guys to come through. You don't know, yeah. if, you know, you don't know how well they're going to shoot. But, boy, when they come out firing like that, 
That's sure a big help to those guys inside. Pullman again. He's got three of them. Timeout for SU. It will be a Metzger Financial Services timeout. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Scoreboard is presented by Loddix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit Loddix at their Van Wert location or online at Loddix.com. Our instant replay is provided by Carry Insurance in Grover Hill. Call or stop by to see how Carry Insurance can assist you with your insurance needs. Well, you know, Mark, it went into that timeout with uh, you know, Luke Pullman just hitting his third three of the game, but you know, they wanted to take Tay Hess away. Well, they've done it. Yes, they have. But you've come back with somebody else that just cans the three. You know, Jerry, you never want to see anybody get hurt, but when Mesher went out with his injury, it allows some development to take place, and one of those guys is Pullman. And when you, yeah, and when you're looking at the long season ahead, how important is that? Yeah, and Mitch Randley have gotten a lot of playing time, and then Kanapke got hurt and had increased their playing time, and he's really paid off dividends here. Kanapke on the top of the circle. Hess. Tate Hess. Short bankers blocked by Sheets. Kneecamp rebounds. His runner to lane does it go, and the rebound comes to Nate Lickley. We saw Austin Kneecamp hit that so well against St. Henry a week ago. There's a three out of the corner. Kanapke snares it. Hess. Tate Hess to the rim and finishes at the rim. Fires up 11-0, four minutes into this one. Well, you know, really, I think it was Austin Ekemp who made that happen. Yeah. You know, they had to stay in them. They could not drop off of him. That's their baseline jumper over Ekemp. Connect with another rebound. That's one thing, too, that size advantage all over the court by Marion Local makes it tough for outside shooters. Yes. Right-handed shot doesn't go, but he will have our first foul of the basketball game, and we'll head to the line for Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. They give that to Jerry. Looks like Carson Hunter picked up the foul. This is the replay. Hess did a very good job of drawing that foul. He was a little bit off balance going to his left. He wasn't able to draw the foul. We had some subs into the game. Number 15 is Brandon Ike for Marion Local. And number 10 is in as well, Mitchell Ranley. And also number 11, that's Jared Harding for Crestview as he makes both free throws. we got to remember something, too. Crestview was down big in a couple of their other games. We also mentioned about Marion Local being up big on St. Henry in the district final. But St. Henry eventually went ahead. They uh, Flyers were up 25 plus. Well, they had 25 points in the opening quarter against St. Henry. And by the time we got near the end of the third, St. Henry led 43-41 before the Flyers righted the ship. Here's Temple for three. There they got one on the board. Mitch Temple has 28 of those on the year. An ultimate out for Ohio, three-point field goal. Here's Ranley, just checked in a moment ago. That's ball stolen. Here's Temple headed to the rim. And if, as he went up to score, to score, Coleman fouled him. And you know, just like that, yes, it's a 10-point lead right now, but the complexion has just changed. All of that starting from hitting that big three. It's Temple will get a couple of Lee's famous recipe free throws as we had a chance to look at our carry insurance replay. He shoots 71% from the line. back in as is Mesher. And overall, the Knights are a very good free throw shooting team. They are. They shoot about 70% uh, on the season. And he makes both of those. He's got all four points for the Knights early on. Here's Hess. Tommy's matched up out front with Harding. He can't, he can shoot that three out there. You gotta go out and play him, as Sheets did. Back cuts knocked out of bounds, and Sheets almost got to it in time. 
Yeah, you mentioned it. I think that's what makes New Camp such a threat. That's what makes Marion local so dangerous. When you've got somebody like that that can step outside, you cannot leave him alone. Here comes Kanapke back into the basketball game. And it will be Ike's turn to get a break. Now, Brandon Ike just stepped out of the game. But, you know, Mark, at this point in the season two tournament time, those players coming in off the bench, your bench is so key. Reverse layup, bounces around, and will go in for Anley. Six-foot junior averages about three-plus a game. Here's Hunter to the rim, and his left-handed shot doesn't go. It banged around. Sheets rebounds. He lost it. Hess lost that one. Yes, sir, these two schools both play football, Jerry. Yes. You know, Mark, I'll give it away now. We were surprised when we looked and saw that the last time that these yes. two teams have played. Think about that. When was it? 2003 yep. in the state tournament. Yes. They have not played in, I think, football or basketball since that time. Thanks to Coach Dave Bowen for yep. pointing that out to us. Nazir Easterling checked in, 6'5", senior. He wears the number 35. He's posted up inside. Essler trying to get away from Mesher. Hunter's going to the rim. He rebounded the basketball, yeah, but he played out of, on, yeah, out of bounds line, yep. That will bring Lickley back into the game. You know, it's got to be tough, too, when you don't play against people like that all year. And I know they do once in a while, but when you've got two big guys in there like that, the Marin Local does, you know, the drive is there, but wait a minute. You might be used to getting a shot off. You're not going to get it off very easily. Yes, Randley. Big guys playing pitch and catch. And with that, we're going to get a foul that will allow Jack Kanapke to go to the free throw line. Foul to Jerry. Let's see what it says on the board. I think they called it on anybody. <laughs> they don't put it up on the board. I like this facility. One of the negatives is they, the foul went to Temple. Think, yeah, yeah, Temple. But they don't put the uh, foul up on the individual. You have to look at her team stats to see who did it. Nice rotation for him as he makes a couple of Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. Pushes the lead back to 13. Jared Harding. Flyers doing such a good job of denying that reversal right now. Essler and Hess. Harding. Chris Temple's going to back it out, reset this play. Approaching 60 seconds to go, opening quarter. This is Essler. Pass does down inside, and Easterly has to throw it back on top. Temple went ahead to the rim and Randley knocked it away. You know, Jerry, when you have that kind of size, it allows you to be really good on ball sure does. defenders on the perimeter because you've got a couple of rim protectors back there. Yes, it sure does. You know, and on the other end, sure makes shooting a lot easier for you as an offensive player because, you know, you've always got somebody to bail you out if you miss. Lickley for three. He got it. Wow, what a good looking shot. His 70th three point field goal of the season. Cuts it to a 10-point lead, heading into the last 30 seconds. Hess is going to throw it back out to Ranley. It's going to be a yell a set as we're at 20. Hess will bracket it out as he's guarded by Jared Harding. You no, know, I like that. They came down on that offensive possession. They were not looking for that last shot. They were going to take what was given to them. That sure kind of pushed off yeah. to get open right there. No call. Hess trying to get a jumper up at the buzzer. It's a little long. It's a good opening quarter for the Flyers. 17-7 to break. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Our premier sponsor of the very local community is OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPAC. Our second quarter tonight is sponsored by Holman Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist. 
member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles. And you know, Mark, at this point in the season where these games are so big, I will throw in that thank you to our sponsors Absolutely. for making that possible. That is a dead solid fact. We wouldn't be here without them. They give so much publicity and goodwill to our kids and our, our communities. And thank them so much. Skip pass. Austin Niekamp wants to go baseline. He will throw it on top to Hess. Here's Paul, but he's got three threes already. Carson Hunter rebounds. We'll go the other way. Big possession, Crestview. You know, you get this under double figures and you're back into them after a blazing start by the Flyers. Yeah, good teams know the patience of getting a, uh, your deficit back. Here's Etzler, fights his way inside. And who hit it out of bounds? It will go to the Flyers. You notice, too, you know, at this level, and I, I, it shouldn't be any different than the first game of the sectional, but you really don't see people complaining about calls. You know what I mean? Yeah. you got to play through it. I mean, that's just one of the things you're going to play through, all that physicality. Well, just like we have the, the best of teams by the time you get to regional right. finals, you're getting to the best officials, too. So even less reason to struggle right. a little bit. Knapke, Hess. Mesher throws it inside. It's tipped away. There's Hess going to the rim again. It gets cut off. Lionel doing a great job, I think, on knee camp right now. And Knapke is called for a travel in the low post. Temple, 6'2 senior, will advance the basketball. There's Gavin Etzler, now Hunter on top. Lickley. You know, I think it was uh, Temple hit that game winner against Audeville, you know, in the sectional, I believe it was. We got a five count, taking a little long to get the play run, and the pressure caused them to turn it over after five. Might have been wrong. It might have been in double overtime. That's with the floor spread. Two minutes into this quarter, neither team has scored. That's what a runner floats it around. It bounces out, tipped around. That's where Kanapke go after it. Flyers keep possession. Some action. A lot of it. Pullman ball fakes, goes to the rim. Floater, nope, and the rebound. Sheets ripped it away. Good solid rebound by Sheets that time. Temple. He's going to go to the rim. Spin move, shot up. No, but this Temple will go to the free throw line. You know, Mark, I go back to that flurry of activity, you know, on, on the Marion local end. If you don't play through that, you don't end up at the free throw line down here. That foul went to Pullman. If it, if it is, that is his second. I'm waiting to see what the scoreboard does with it. In the meantime, we're going to get some Leeds famous recipe chicken free throw. They spun out on it. They never did put the foul up on the board yet, but I think it was. Yeah, I, I believe it was. Actually, they put one up on the board for Kanapke. I, well, we'll see how that plays out. He does make the second of our free throws. Five points for game for him, and it's under 10, 17-8. There's Kanapke inside. Hess for three. Pullman tracks it down in the corner. That's where rebounding is so key. Temple knocked it loose. Pullman gets it back, and they're going to reset. Pullman's going to rise up again. That would bounce out. Here comes Carson Hunter the other way. Numbers three on two. And we're going to get a foul. That one will go against Pullman. Well, if that other foul was on Jack Kanapke, then that would be good. Otherwise, it's three on Pullman. Here comes Randley back in the game along with Ike. 
I, I really like how Coach Guttermiller uses his bench too. He uses them at key times. You know, that way when they're in the fourth quarter, those kid, those guys, they, they've already been in the game and battle tested. It was not a shooting foul, so we'll take this one out of bounds. Third team foul. Here's Lickley for three. A little long, and Harding tracked it down the corner and bounced it off the face to Ike. Great effort that time by Hardy. That play again, our Insta Retail play today, sponsored by Carey Insurance. The only point scored here in the quarter has been scored by a Crestview Knight. Or, half, or almost yeah. halfway through the quarter. Hunter works inside, bounce pass, and a nice assist ends up in the hands of Jared Harding for his first basket. Now it's seven point lead, here come Crestview. Yeah, you know, that's one of those tough shots too, you know, can't use the backboard there. And Messer traveled out front under pressure. Here comes Hess back into the game. Hess was a first-team All-Mac player and was a third-team Northwest Ohio player. Kanapke was first in both. We'll get you to Crestview guys in a moment. Hunter wanted to shoot that one. Harding. Here's Temple. Hunter's only had a couple three attempts even on the year, so he's not looking to shoot that. Temple for soft. three. Kanapke rebounds. side is blank on very local here in the quarter. Played four and a half minutes. Kanapke inside on a wonderful pass and score. You know what, he's a quarterback, right? Throw him open, that's Absolutely. what they call it. Yep. Put the ball right in a position where he can catch and score. Now they're, Marion Local works so hard to reverse the ball and catch the defense out of position. Harding nails a 18 foot jump shot. He's got four in the game now. Ranley, short shot and misses. Kanapke rebounds, gets it blocked, but he's fouled. You know, nobody on the defensive side ever wants a foul against the big kid, you know, yeah. but it just that's the way it works. And I, I don't think a lot of people realize how difficult and how physical you have to be as a big player. Kanapke rattles in a Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw of his fifth point. And how good of a free throw shooter you need to be because you're going to go to the line a lot. I think that's an area where he has improved through the course of the season. He's up to 66%. It was a bit of a struggle. You get a good look here at the 6'9 junior. But that one's short. Harding dives for the ball right in front of us. Some good sportsmanship as yeah. Kanapke's door helps him up. Pullman's going to check back in on the dead ball. Sometimes you don't realize how important uh, that sportsmanship is. It's so physical, he just going after it. Then you see Luke Kanapke come over and help him up. Great camera work there. Good replay. Thank you guys in the truck. Thank you, Kerry Insurance. Oh, Kanapke, I'm sorry. Looking for somebody and finally finds Pullman and then Hess. Sheets is doing a really nice job of working inside. Hess is going to get a short jumper. Nope, he's going to pull up and bring it back out to Mesher and they reset. Yep, you're going to see the ball reversed again and trying to get that help away from Kanapke to dump it into him. Ball's tip loose. Good play defensively by Sheets. Rain, Red got a hand on it. Most, I think, Kanapke's points have come off rebounds and free throws. So, really, Crestview's going to Pass inside, good and good offensive sequence. Put the ball into the hands of Carson Hunter for his first basket. It's down to six. 
Last time it was six was right after Luke Coleman made the second of his three three-point field goals in the opening quarter. And we have the Crestview people behind us, and they have got some life. Kanapke spins into the lane and fights it back out. Hess goes to the lane, and before he can shoot the basketball, Etzler fouled him. Off balance there, but he got fouled in round, so I think it's an out of bounds and not a shooting foul. Yeah, but Essler tried to get it from behind and whacking him on the arm. You know, coming from behind is no no mystery to Crestview on the Knights. Yes, looking, looking, and finally finds Ranley. Temple battling with the basketball. Randley, we're going to get a held ball. And the arrow will favor the Knights. Boy, you've got to give them credit. They have really stepped things up, especially defensively. Isn't that what you do, Jerry, in a 32-minute game? You just keep playing. OK, yep. we're down big early, and you just keep playing. They've gotten himself back in it, just down six with the ball. Number of times somebody would say to me about a team that's down big, can they still win? Absolutely yes. they can. Sheets muscles up. But the ball gets knocked out of bounds by Hardings. Tried so hard to get that shot up over Kanapi. He kind of overshot it. 57.5 to go. And again, that's where that size really uh, makes a big difference on the inside. Just a three-point quarter for the Flyers. All of those by Jack Kanapke. That ball's tipped loose by Lickley. Turnaround jumper will be short. Tip. And that's going to foul. is going to go against Kanapke. He was weighing on the back of a press unite. Now he has two fouls. With 38.4 to go, that will bring Ike back in the game and replace Kanapke. Yeah, they're going to get him out, especially on that defensive end. Here's that replay. Let's watch him. Right here, watch how he plays Temple. He just leans on him and goes. Well, that's the call. Just enough, I guess. Yep, just enough. How about Temple battling, though? 6'2 point guard. Well, and that's how you do it. You box out. There's Temple. Randley's got the five count on him. Etzler. There's Temple. Lickley. Lickley's done a great job, I think, defensively. He's kind of that unsung hero out there right now. Temple keeps looking at the clock. He can't get loose. Esther's going to get a running three, and Hess got a hand on the ball and on the shooter. And he's going to the line for three. Tate Hess will get his first foul, but Gavin Etzler will get three. Leads famous Hess from chicken free throws. As you would expect from a coach's son, he's a 75% free throw shooter from the line. That play again, right there, you can see the hit on the arm. And you know what? He has not scored this evening. And what a benefit for him to get on the board heading into the halftime. That'll give him some confidence. Yep, sometimes too. That's really where you get your touch and the feel for the shot is standing there at the free throw line. And they have cut it to three. Yes. Length of the floor, throw, hit the backboard, and that was all. We're 16 minutes into this one, and it's a game. It's on now. Mary Local 20, Crestview 17 at the break. You're watching high school basketball on WLSN. Back at the Stroh Center halftime, our halftime adjustments are presented by Chevrolet, Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area for over 100 years. Put some stat numbers up on the board for you here for a moment to, to look at. See the Crestview Knights are on the floor and nobody's brought them a basketball to shoot with. Well, Jerry, the field goal shooting, not good for Crestview opening quarter. Much better Mary Local, but then it flipped in the second quarter, and we've got ourselves a ball game. Yeah, we certainly do. And, you know, of course, that 50% from three for Mary Local 
Those all started out the first nine points, the first threes hit. You know, Byberry and Local and Luke Pullman. They do. Luke Pullman is the leading scorer in the basketball game. He has nine for Marion Local. Jack Kadapke has five. He is the only flyer to score in quarter number two. They had 17 in the opening quarter, three in the second. Crestview, their leading scorer is Mitch Temple. He's got five, but a lot of guys have four, three, and two. Their quarter scores were seven and 10 for their 17 points. We look at the stat page, Jerry. We've seen the opening 16 minutes. Your thoughts on second half? Well, you know, one of the things that strikes me initially is when you look at the field goal percentages, it doesn't really surprise me because it's very, very physical. I think one of the things that, you know, Coach Etzler is going to say in there at halftime or did say is, you know, they're not going to hit like that from three. Let's keep taking away the inside game, play solid on defense, and don't allow penetration, and we'll be okay. And, I, you know, again, they battled back from before. I think if you're married local, you're just telling them, hey, keep the ball moving, we'll get it inside and will control the boards. The, the defense for each team took a one player kind of out. Uh, Gavin Esler made three free throws at the end of the uh, half. That was his only points. Austin Niekamp has not scored in the basketball game. I'm thinking both coaches would like to see those guys get going in half number yeah, two. Yeah, it, it's interesting on one hand that those guys have not been a major factor in the scoring aspect. On the other side of the coin, you have to credit the defenses for doing that. And I think, again, Marion Local's done a great job of taking Gavin Etzler out of the game, you know, or at least, you know, from a scoring threat. And likewise, hey, listen, I came into this game thinking Austin Neekamp, I really believe this, was the, the big difference in this game. Yeah. And so far, they've done uh, a good job. It's been a lickly and a team defense is taking care of that. Yes. Our halftime adjustments have been presented by Chevrolet Cadillac in Lima. Second half action coming up in just a moment. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Our scoreboard is presented by Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit Loudix at their Van Wert location or online at loudix.com. Our instant replay tonight are provided by Carry Insurance in Grover Hill. Call or stop by to see how Carry Insurance can assist you with your insurance needs. We're heading to our third quarter. Our third quarter is sponsored by Holman Insurance this evening. And it will be Flyer Basketball for the, again, the third eight-minute stanza this evening. Well, Mark, we talked before about those first three, four minutes of the second half are so key in the, in the outcome of the game. And they put Austin Niekamp in a low post, and they looked at him right away. He's going to work inside, and his jump hook goes. What did we talk about at halftime, Jim? Yep, exactly right. Austin Niekamp's first basket puts his team up five. Gavin Etzler, this is Carson Hunter for three. Ren Sheets well, hustles into the rebound, passes it, but Hess steals it. A lot of traffic in there to make that. Three on two the other way. Hess, and he's going to go up and will draw contact that will go against Gavin Etzler, his second foul. I think if he hadn't reached in to try to tip that ball away, he probably would have gotten away with an offensive, you know, offensive foul on that. Here it is again on Carey Insurance. Yeah, right, he came down in. with his right hand. Good call, Jerry. Going to shoot a couple of Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. They're in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Hess has four points and has made all five, or all three of his free throws for his fifth point. Good look at the Marion local quarterback offensively in football and point guard in basketball. Yeah, can I tell you how important it is to have your quarterback in football? on the basketball team. The, it's the same job, isn't it? Yes, it's it the is. same job. Here's Temple. His team is trails by seven. Etzler for three out of the corner. His coach got wow. him going. Three-point field goal. An ultimate outdoor Ohio three-point field goal. Just a pure shoot. That is something. Both coaches went into the halftime and said, we got to get one of our guys going, and both have done so. Yeah, that's so much for shutting those guys out. Pullman looks inside the knee camp again. Kanapke now in the top of the circle. Kanapke's going to take a three. Hunter rebounds. He's made one out there this season. Well, in all fairness, I think Crestview got what they wanted out of that possession. 
It's Temple working inside on Pullman. Up with the left hand. Mesher gets the rebound. That just illustrates how physical the game is. You know, that's, there's just no easy shot. Hess for three. Good check out inside Lickley, which allowed Temple to rebound. Here's Etzler in transition. Temple works the lane. He's going to go all the way with left hand and finish. Mitch Temple with point six and seven. It's a two-point game. That's what patience will do for you. You know, they're down big early, down 9-0. Just keep playing. Mesher hasn't scored yet as well. Sitting with the basketball, throws it into Kanapke. Kick out. Pullman's going to get a three. His fourth one of the night. He's got 12 points off the three-point line. And that's what they're going to have to do. They're going to sag in and take Austin Camp away. Someone's going to be open. Another ultimate outdoor Ohio three-point field goal. Carson Hunter. Here's Temple. He looks inside to Sheets, who muscles up and scores inside. Ren Sheets' first basket of the night. Boy, did he muscle that up. Yes, he did. He's a 6'6 sophomore. What do you think he'll be like in his senior exactly year, Jerry? Exactly right. I look at him and see how much better he's going to be. Kneecap short shot goes. He's got four now all in this quarter. I think he's got one of the best touches, you know, from even outside of three. Just a pure shooter. And he is a 6'8 sophomore as well. Here's Etzler running off a screen. It's Temple. Hunter's going to get a three look. It's a little long, but Sheets got the rebound. Nope, throws it back in bounds. And Lickley shots blocked from behind, but Mesher got some body and arm with it. I said this before, Lickley's going to the line. You no, know, he's going to be shooting that uh, Lee's famous recipe free throw, but I just think he's such an unsung hero here. I, I, I know he's averaging over 10 a game, but he just does a lot of the little things so well. Fox is out well, plays defense well. Nate Lickley and Ren Sheets were honorable mention all Northwest Ohio this year. Gavin Etzer was a second team performer in the Northwest Ohio. These guys were also prominently mentioned in the Northwest Conference. All league teams as well. Splits the pair, cuts the lead to four as we approach four minutes to go, quarter three. Right down to Kanapke. He went up against Easterly. Ball's going to be banged out front to Hess. Back to Kanapke it goes, and Easterly bangs him in the back. Yeah, it was just poor timing, I think, on that. Yeah. You know, he, didn't know, he was caught in a spot whether to get around him and front him or to try to steal that ball. And this guy caught the pass was timed perfectly to draw the foul. Easterly bangs into Kanapke. There's the first play to it. Mike tried to get it up. Here's Austin Niekamp going back door. No shot. Foul was before the shot. It was on the catch. That foul will go to Mitch Temple, his second. You know, that's where that young man has grown to. And I don't know if we caught it. But he was very, very frustrated they didn't count it. But he stopped the meeting. Let's play. Yeah. Let's just play. Let's play. Randley throws it inside. Austin Niekamp. And... He got pushed by Easterly. And that's exactly why he kept his composure previously. We talked about that as coaches, that, you know, we're going to see this here. Oh, yeah, right here it is. He's frustrated. That didn't count. And then all of a sudden, he just stops. Like, right there. Just stop. Okay. But, I, I but that's why he gets the yep. next one. Yep. Let his coach do the complaining. Not complaining. The discussion. Discussion, yeah. Mr. Official, sir. Pass in the corner. Ranley gets a three look. Ah. Mitchell Ranley's first three point field goal of the season, of the game, I should say, is 15th of the season. He's got five in the game now. Pushes the lead back up to seven with an ultimate outdoor Ohio three point field goal. He hit a couple big threes against St. Henry a week ago. Another one of those guys who got a lot of playing time with the injuries to Kanapke and to Mesher. 
Here's Etzler finally got loose. They, they get to him in a hurry. Temple ball fakes and goes inside, and Kanapke gets it away from him, but bounced it on the end line. Well, that's great recovery by Mary Local defensively. They swing the ball around and reverse it. Here we see the great shot this time. Thanks to Carey Insurance for sponsoring our instant replays this evening. Mitchell Randley with that shot. Sheets inside. Napke's walled up against him. That's for three. A little bit hard. Sheets goes and gets a rebound and saved it. Hardings has it. Good physical strength by a couple wow. of Knights. That possession allows him a second shot opportunity. There's a lob inside. Kanapke goes high and gets it. Yeah, that's always going to be a tough pass in there. Yes. That's drove to the lane and will be fouled going up to shoot. It's Carson Hunter. Let's wait and see. It is for a fact. Second foul on him. Right there. Tate Hess has six points in the game. Four of those have come at the free throw line with Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. But you know, every one of those, now seven, you know, most of them come from the free throw line, but they're so key. Yeah. You know, they're just key times that really need a bucket. Good look at Tate Hess. You think that young man as a quarterback uh, knows what is. it takes to win ball games? I think he does. And he has made all six of his free throws this evening to 75% free throw shooter on the year. And all of a sudden, we are up to a nine point flyer lead. 2.26 to go, quarter three. See if the Knights can make another run. Sheets inside with Kanapke. Spin move, lowers his shoulder, and goes up and scores. Yeah, nice move. Yes, sir. Stuck his shoulder in right in that chest and jumped over him and scored. Much needed basket, cuts it to seven. There's Kanapke inside. Sheets knocked it away from him momentarily. Spins into the lane and gets called for an offensive foul for throwing an elbow. Jack Kanapke's third foul. And I think that official had a very good angle on that to see that. Kanapke will set down with those three fouls. He'll be replaced by Austin Kneecap. Let's see it again. There's a shot at the other end. Just stick that shoulder in so he can't block your shot. Gives a young man, too, you know, going against that. Gives him a lot of confidence in the paint. Here's the foul at the other end. Coming up. What a great look at a baseline camera. Thank you, Lexi Waddle. There's the elbow. Yep. And that we're going to get an offensive screen, a legal screen. I think we are. I think Etzler set an illegal screen. He did. And now Gavin Etzler has three fouls. Coach Doug Etzler asking for an explanation and got it. Maybe not to his liking, but he got it anyway. Officials see with their eyes, coaches see with their hearts. That's exactly right. Hess. Randley, Kneecamp is going to get a three look. It's short. Pullman gets the rebound away. There's Mesher. Did they do as good a job as anybody, Jerry, is taking the ball from side to side of the court? You beat me to it. I'm just going to say what both teams have done such yes, a good job Here's of reversing it. the basketball and getting shots. Lickley in transition. Kneecamp. Snatches the rebound out of the air. That was a good look. 60 seconds to go. Quarter three. Hess pull up jumper. No. Hunter rebounds. You know, too, so many of the rebounders, so many of the big guys, you know, in this, we've seen they just keep the ball up high on that rebound. And, boy, you just have to break their forearms in order to get the ball. It's a seven-point lead. Marion Local. Crestview. Trying to cut into it before the break. Oh, 
Very patient possession. Two teams that are very well disciplined. And that all stems from very good coaching. You buy into the system, you do what needs to be done. So much fun coaching teams like that. There's Temple again, last shot time. Here comes the play. Gets off the screen, they double him up, and then Randley gets back to him. Clock running down, well defended. Lickley's gonna get a three. Hit the back of the rim and almost went down. As we head to the next eight minutes, it'll be the Mary Local 34 and Crestview 27. You're watching High School Basketball WOSN. Our premier sponsor for the Mary Local community is OPAC at Osgood. For all your industrial painting, standing and assembly needs, call OPAC. And also, our three-point sponsor tonight has been Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of alts, seamless spouting. We're gonna head to the fourth quarter, our home and insurance fourth quarter. Flyers put more, four more points on the board, did crush you in quarter number three, 14 to 10. 12 for Pullman, 8 for Tate Hess, 7 for Mitch Temple, and a bunch of guys with 6 and 4 for Crestview. You know, Mark, you know, 34 27, you know, we, we, some of the other scores we've heard, some of the other scores we've seen, scores are not very high. And I think the scoring is so tough and it's at a premium at ah. this level because it's so physical. And Mitch Temple just took the ball right to the rim and scored his points 8 and 9. I think there's several factors there, Jerry. Here's Austin Niekamp. Repost, spin move in the lane, banks it in. He has a very good second half going now with six. Hey, I watched him banking shots in from the corner. From the corner, <laughs> from the corner deep in the corner. You know, I, I, just to get his touch, I think that's a great, great routine for him. Kapke and Essler both in the game with three fouls. That ball got lost out of bounds. You know the other thing about uh, about scoring, Jerry? There is so much videotape that everybody knows everybody's offense, everybody knows everybody's individual skills and talent set. It, it is uh, it is very difficult to score today. Well, in that sweet spot of coaching, remember yeah. when we didn't have that? <laughs> and we had to go out to games and, you know, you didn't have a phone to even. Yeah. I remember when that came in because that became a problem of scouting teams because people were using their cell phones to video. Right. How could you stop it? Here's Kneekamp in the low post again to Hess. He's going to get a three look. Kanapke rebounds it, tip back out. Pullman, whoop, he's going to pull the trigger again and didn't. Here's Kanapke to Hess. And the pass was a little low to Kneekamp, and he couldn't handle it. He was ready to load up and shoot that yes, one. Yes, he was. Here comes Ren Sheets back in the game. Got some good minutes from Nazir Easterly. That's what I talk about, you know, at this level, getting big quality minutes out of players off the bench. And he's got a lot of minutes all year long, so you know, he's a senior at 6'5". He's really done a nice job coming off the bench. Etzler. There's Temple. Nine points, he leads the pressure in scoring. Sheets working again, passes off, and Kanapke is going to get foul number four, and almost a three-point field goal opportunity. Is on Jack. Yeah, Kanapke. and they just keep battling away here on the inside. They go right at him. I give them a lot of credit for that. They don't back away from those big guys inside. Carson Hunter will go to the free throw line to shoot Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. That's point three for him tonight. As is that Randley? Yeah, Randley checked in for Kanapke. That's a good look at Carson Hunter, 6'3 senior. Both of those. It's a five point lead with Kanapke on the bench. Here's Hess, all the way to the rim, and he overshot it with his left hand. I think he was expecting a lot of physicalness in there. Here's Etzler in transition, gives it up to Sheets. And we had a foul before Etzler's follow up, didn't we? Let's see what happens right here. I think we had a foul. Yes, right there, Pullman got a foul. Luke Pullman's the third foul, and Ren Sheets will go to the free throw line to shoot 
the you know, famous recipe chicken free throws. Now one of the keys going into this for Aaron Logan was take away those easy baskets, you know, because they're capable, very capable of Crestview years of getting down the court fast and getting some easy baskets and really starting to show that right now. Ren Chiefs has five all in the second half. And also for the rebound, who hit it? It will stay with the Crestview Knights. Went out of bounds off of Randley. And Coach Etzer will take a Metzger Financial Services timeout. You're watching high school basketball at WOSN. Second timeout of the game is a Metzger Financial Services timeout. Helping you plan your financial future, visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. And we have mentioned them multiple times tonight. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lime, Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. And they have sponsored our free throws this evening. Well, the first time, Jerry, Crestview took a timeout down 9-0, and they were, all, they were reeling. This time, coaches, he's got time to talk strategy to rest people. It's in a whole different situation. Yep, and I love to see what they do coming out of a timeout. Pass in, Hunter throws it out front for Temple. It's four points. Etzler, Temple, flip screen, and tried to get to Sheets and went out of bounds. Right idea. That's the play they set up at the timeout. There's some full court pressure coming too. Coach Guttermiller. Holman and back to Hess. Regional Championship weekend. We'll be back here on Saturday for a couple of Division Three and Division Two championship matchups. Hess trying to get a screen from Kneecamp. Spins to the lane and said, little jumper, no, nope, rebound. It's Temple. Here comes Crestview. Etzler, this time he's got Pullman guarding. You know, to Mary Loco's credit, they're getting backward defense. And I mentioned about you know, easy baskets that they want to take away. Crestview's very good about that. The Flyers are very good about getting backward defense. Sheets muscles up inside through Austin Neekamp and will draw a Neekamp foul. Austin's first foul will put Red Sheets back to the free throw line. There's the foul on our carry insurance replay. These famous recipe chicken free throws for Red Sheets, a pair of them. It's a mark of a good young player going right at the strength inside like that. Rattled around, he's now two for three at the free throw line, has six points. Imagine how he's going to grow and develop over the next sure couple of years. Wow. That was a little long. The extra bounce. Oh, Carson Hunter had a chance for it. It got knocked out of his hands. That would have been a good second chance possession. Took a second bounce. And he, yeah. he camp wasn't expected. Randley, Pullman. And offensive foul. Illegal screen inside. Let's see who set that. Well, you know, I think that comes from the uh, Knights doing such a good job of fighting through screens that it makes it very tough to get a good screen, so ends up being an illegal. He got Mesher on an off-ball screen. Mesher is a second. Each team has 16 fouls here in the second half. They're going to Sheets again. Tried to, anyway. He and Kneecap going at it down low. A couple of tall, talented sophomores. Hunter in the lane, and left-handed layup finish, Carson Hunter. Six for him, it's a one-point game. And it's a whole new ball game. And timeout, Mary Local, a Metzger Financial Services timeout. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN.
it's time to spring to life with WSN and WTLW TV 44. Our annual spring funding campaign is underway now. Please partner with us by giving a financial donation in any amount. Our capital goal is $50,000 by Mother's Day. You can donate online at WTLW.com backslash donate. Mary Locals first Metzger Financial Services timeout. They have never trailed in the basketball game. And they are up one right now with possession. And they brought Kanapke back in. I was wondering when he was going to do it. You're talking money time now, down in the last four minutes, last part of the game. They're going to play. Four and a half minutes to go to a trip to the state tournament next week in Dayton. And you mentioned Friday it, Mark, night. that's part of the reason why this game is so tough. This game is so hard to win. Coleman trying to get the knee camp inside. And they, there they got it down to him. Here's Kanapke. No, they missed it. Can Mesher save it? He does. Almost an over and back. Yes. Here's knee camp. Hess again. Missed it. Mesher into the rebound. And... Mesher stepped out of bounds with the basketball, and for the first time in the basketball game, a basket will put Crestview ahead. On that possession, Jaden Mesher, which I love the way he plays. He's another one of those, doesn't average a ton of points, even though he's just under 13. Had his hand on the ball there, and just makes so much happen. That was an offensive rebound that came from that weak side. Coach Esther just called a set. Flyers are playing their triangle in two right now. Carson Hunter takes a jumper and is fouled. Yeah, I don't think that's the shot they wanted. But at the same time, he got it. Let's do the free throw line out of it. Tate Hess gets his second foul. Carson Hunter, who made a couple of free throws a moment ago, will go back to the line for a Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw. And bounces out. He can make one and tie it right here. Here's the play. He's got him on the arm. Came down and whacked him across the arm. And he missed that one as well. And Kanapke rebounds. Flyers clinging to a one-point lead. Flyers have just a single basket here in quarter number four. Same issue back in quarter number two. They struggled to score. Kanapke again. This is Hess. And Pullman. And again, boy, Lickley's in there. Playing so tough. Sheets are tied up with knee camp, and it will be possession arrow, Marion Local. Red Sheets, what a play he made right there. Get the tie up. Kanapke, knee camp. Hess looking at Kanapke, got it down inside. He spins in the lane and draws a foul. Yeah, I just love watching those guys go inside like that. How much patience they have to have. Because again, once they get the ball in there, player, you know, defense all over their arms. But that they got to go up strong. Jerry, that is Red Sheets' first foul of the game. Kanapke's free throw, bounces out. One more, Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw for Jack Kanapke. He is three for five on the game and missed them both. Gavin Etzler rebounds. Press view again. Get a triangle into it, looks like. They're playing Etzler and Lickley man to man. Hunter misses. Battle for the rebound. It comes up to Pullman. All the big guys were slapping around. He got the loose change. Knee camp to the rim. And we'll get a blocking foul. That will be called on Nate Lickley, his first of the game. It's one and one time. Took a pretty good shot. They're going to get him out of the game for a moment and bring in Jarrett Harding. 
He won't stay long. I'll bet not. Austin Niekamp has had a really good sophomore season. He has struggled some at the free throw line this year. He's got a one on one opportunity right here. And again, the ball bounces around, doesn't go in. And again, for the third time, Preston, you could take the lead. That's uncharacteristic of Austin Niekamp, too. Hunter. Harden just gave it up to Temple. Harding's going to get a jumper off the baseline. That one rimmed out, and I think that's knocked it out of bounds. There's Sheets again. You know, uh, Crestview has oh. done such a good job of rebounding all through the tournament. They're see not who's, huge. See who's back in the game? Oh, yeah. Literally. You called him. There he You're is. not going to keep him no. out long. 148 to go. This is the basketball right there. Here's Etzler. There's Temple. He's going to go around. Hess challenges. Sheets going to reap on a catch and pass and score. When Sheets has points, seven late. This team leads by one off a great assist. Hess works the lane. Coleman. For the first time, Marion Local trails in the basketball game. Kanapke down low. He gets doubled up. Hess gets a three look. Niekamp gets the rebound, but he went over the back of Nate Lickley, who will go to the free throw line at the other end. And I think, you know, the, the difference there, he made body contact yeah. that was on his back when he got that rebound. It was a wonderful pass right there from Carson Hunter, kind of one of those hockey assist type things. You get a couple of them, but watch the check out. Lickley at 6'2", oh, look, look at that position. And you see the physical, you know, the contact on that, which caused, caused the foul. And he it wasn't just that he reached over him. He's a one of one free throws. He's been a very good free throw shooter on the season. And that one's long, and knee camp rebounds. Here comes the Flyers down one. Hess to the lane, gives it up. Pullman for three, short. That time, knee camp rebound. He missed that one. Kanapke put back, it's in. Kanapke's follow up gives him seven, and his team up one with a minute to go. Patience is such a big key. Temple works inside. He rolls it in. It's going to count. Mitch Temple with points 10 and 11. Watch the foul by Pullman right there. You learn early on in a very physical game. You've got to play through. You've got to be tough. You've got to be strong when you've got that shot inside. Mitch Temple with 11, and bounces around, has rebounds. It's still a one-point game. Hess to the rim, and will draw a foul that'll put him at the free throw line. These famous recipe chicken free throws coming up. This one of one yet, I believe. Well, free throws win ball games. I missed who they gave the uh, free throw to. Hess has eight points in the game. He's going to get a one and one right here. Tate Hess. Bounces out. Kanapke rebounds. He left that one short. And that's going to be a foul on Austin Niekamp. That's a little bit of a frustration foul, I think. And he's done such a good job of controlling that all the way through. Carson Hunter will go to the free throw line. He is two for four tonight. That is the 10th team foul according to the scoreboard. So that makes a double bonus. That one he rattled in. Point seven for him. His team is up two. Timeout, Marion Local. We're going to take a break also. Come back for the final two minutes or two point places of this when you're watching high school basketball WOSN. We're going to talk about our sponsorship this evening has been so valuable for us. Loudick Jewelry has sponsored our scoreboard. Carry Insurance, our instant replay. OPAC has been our premier sponsor for Marion Local tonight. Ultimate Outdoor, our three-point sponsor. Leeds, Famous Recipe Chicken, our free throws. 
Holman Insurance has been the quarter sponsor tonight. Metzger Financial Services, our timeout sponsor, and Lima Chevy did our pregame and halftime sponsorship this evening. And we appreciate all of those and all of our sponsors this season on WOSN. What a great student representation it today. Is. There's Carson Hunter at the free throw line. I tell you, Mark, sometimes I think nothing brings communities like this together better, you know, than success in the regional basketball or state basketball tournaments. Hunter made the first of two. Kanapke rebounds. It's a two-point game. See what Coach Gunnar-Miller came up with in his timeout. Mesher in the corner, and he just took a timeout. Well, Jerry, we are at 27.1. Coach Gunnar Miller has taken his third timeout, trailing by two. There are nine team fouls for the Crestview Knights, so any fouls a double bonus. Of course, Mary Local is at 10, so any foul that they create will also be a double bonus situation. The other way, timeout situations, Crestview has three, Mary Local has two and the arrow would favor Crestview should that become a equation, a part of the equation. You know, I think the big thing right now, 27 seconds left, you're telling your guys, get the best shot you can get, take it. If it gets down in that 15 or second range, then it's a whole different game. You're yeah. probably going to take a timeout, set up what you want, but you're two down, so you've got to get a shot off. And, and in time, the offensive rebound, right. if you need to be able to do that and too. if you don't, you know, you got to foul quick. Well, tomorrow afternoon, Lutheran West Van Wert will play here at 4 o'clock. Ottawa Glendorf will play Wayne Trace at 1 o'clock, and those games will appear on WOSN this weekend, Saturday night as well. Let's see how this one plays out. Somebody wants to go to Dayton and will be decided in the next 25 seconds. Or do we go overtime? Yes. Probing. Yes. Gives it up. Pullman wanted a shot. Now he goes inside. Pullman scoop shot. Rolls out. Kanapke tipped it in. We're tied, and Crestview takes a timeout with four and a half seconds to go. May give him another second. I don't know nothing. I don't know. For it, so. How did Kanapke get tip. to the ball? Got just enough hand on to slap it in. Wow. Well, I guess, Jerry, at that point, you don't worry about fouling somebody. Yeah. Watch him. Right? Yeah, just go for I the ball, and he slapped yeah. it back in. Where's the ball at? Kind of like over in front of the uh, Mary local bench, correct? Yes. And, you know, you, you tell players, you know, as a rebounder, it's nothing. just get your hand on Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. It just happened to go in. Well, and now if you're Crestview, you have the basketball, four and a half seconds to go. We're tied up. You want to go to the rim, right? Yes, Draw contact you if you can. Get the best look you can. You're going to try to go with one of your best free throw shooters. What a high school basketball game we have seen from the Stroh Center this evening. Isn't this a great arena to watch it really a ball is. game? Yeah. To call a game, to play a game. I, I always liked the old Anderson Arena, but this is a pretty close second, Jerry. Yep. When they built it, they did so much to try oh, to yes, keep that did. same All flavor right. to it. Carson Hunter is the inbounder. Temple looks at the clock. Temple to the rim, and he will be fouled. Now, did it come before the clock went zero? Let's see. There is no time currently on the clock. Well, I'm sure we're going to see that again here. Here we go. Here's the clock as well, and was about, a, was called before the about a second to go. Let's see if they put any time back on the clock, however. Temple is going to get to go to the free throw line. And no, they do not have the luxury of video replay. They do not. Now, if was that foul? will next week, Let's take if not in a situation like this. I think that foul was also on Luke Pullman, which would be was, his yeah. fifth. And he is still on the court. Now we've just signaled, I believe. And we are discussing time. It's a good call, Jerry. He's got him locked up right there. That's a good call. 
you, 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 know, you don't want it to end that way, but that's no, a good call. If you a don't, foul is a foul is a foul. If you don't call that, then, then you let them get away with something that affects the game anyway. Temple at the free throw line. You know, for people, and I, I know that I've said this a lot, that, you know, that disagree, but, you know, you, you'll hear people say, you don't call that in a game like this. Well, well wait a minute. Yes, you do. Wait a minute. Yep. So, what about in the first quarter? That basket it, might have been key. So, you know, you have to call the game. They have the put same. half a second back on the clock, which means you have time to catch and shoot. Mitch Temple will get two free throws. They're in the double bonus with half a second left. One more. And now Coach Guttermiller is going to take a timeout. A Metzger Financial Services timeout. Wow. And Mark, how does that play in you? How does that play in you as a yeah. shooter? Yeah. The guy who's had a really good game tonight has missed a couple of free throws late. And with half a second to go, he has a chance to put his team in date. We talked about the pressure in playing this particular game, Jerry. One young man's had a great basketball game, and he's going to get to go to the free throw line. Ike's going to check back into the game. Well, you mentioned it, you know, about the pressure to win this game is so, so it tough. Is. Well, here we are. That pressure at five tenths of a second left. Pressure is not going to take a chance of an offensive rebound foul should he miss this one. They're just going to get off the line. That's a pretty good strategy move right there against 6869 yes, inside. It is. Why not? Here's Temple, the free throw line. He rattled it in. Pass with a catch. Westview Knights celebrate at midcourt. <laughs> Coach Guttermiller thought there was a foul on that last attempted catch. What a game. What, what an a finish. Game. And you know, Mark, you just you just hate to see it end this way for a team. The joy on one side. You know, the, the total, total agony on the other. The brutalness of the high school tournament. We're going to take it. Here's the last play. Here's Ike's pass. You can see Hess was going up for the ball. So was Temple. And I'll tell you, what, what a right idea by Marion Local to do that. Half a second to go, and that was the final play. It is trophy time. It's time for Jerry and I to take a break and come back with our final thoughts and stats from this one. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We're back at the Stroh Center where the Crestview Knights with a 41-40 win over the Marion Local Flyers. This is Coach Etzler in the center of the court right now getting his medal and about to receive a championship trophy. A tremendous high school basketball game, Jerry, and for the first time since 2019 when they won a state championship, the Crestview Knights are headed to Dayton next week. Yes, they are. It's everybody's goal. We look at the bracket now from Region 14. That Crestview came out of and You're right. They're headed to Dayton. Guys in the truck have been doing a really good job of putting together the rest of the brackets that we'll see in Division Four. You can see Rushi will get Richmond Heights. Crestry will play Berlin Highland, a 47-45 winner tonight down at OU over Worthington or Westerville, Northside Christian. They will play Berlin Highland next week at 5:15 on Friday evening. And the finals move to 
And you know Sunday the good afternoon. thing too, Mark, with that is, you know, Crestview's in the opposite bracket of Richmond Heights, yeah. which is, you well, know, here's known the other, as the best team. Here's the other really good thing. You play Friday, Sunday. If you win Friday, you get a chance to take a day to prep and you don't have to play that back-to-back -back situation. Watch the Crestview Knights celebrate. They're gonna cut down the nets here. Very local, a fine, fine season. They were champions of the Midwest Athletic Conference, eight one record. They're gonna finish this campaign at 22 and five and a second place finish in the regional. They were led in scoring tonight by Luke Pullman. He had 12 points all from the three point line. Eight from Tate Hess, seven from Jack Kanapke, eight from uh, six from Austin Niekamp. Quarter scores of 17, three, 14 and six for their 40. The Crestview Knights, they were led in scoring by Mitch Temple with 12 including the game-winning free throw. Eight from Red Sheets, all in the second half. Seven from Carson Leonard, six from Gavin Etzler. Quarter scores of seven, 10, 10, and 14. They will go to 24 and three. You've got the stat page in front of you, Jerry, from Bowling Green State University. Anything else jump up out at you? Well, the one thing that does strike me a little bit is shooting 52% from the line and still winning. Still winning and the basketball game. And you know what? Game. They hit the big one. They you really said did. that, you know, you, you know, free throws win ball games, and it sure did. We have been in contact this week at, with uh, Bowling Green State University and Jamie Beringer, and we appreciate uh, all the effort that Bowling Green State University has done to help us put this together. Our crew this week, there's Jamie right there. She's had a tough week reeling around on that wheelie this week, trying to take care of all of us this week as she had leg surgery a long time ago. We hope she heals up quickly from that. I want to thank our crew this week. It's Benjamin Reif is our director. Replay by Megan Sherrick, our camera people, Kelsey Beimer, Caitlin Henderson, Zach Keith, and Lexi Waddle. And back in master control, Kelly Getz and Nick Fraley. Once again, the Crestview Knights will move into the state tournament next week with a 41-40 win over the Marion Local Flyers. You've been watching regional championship basketball on WOSN. Yeah, uh, this is a bitter pill to swallow, no, no question about it. Uh, you come this close to the state tournament and things didn't go our way at the end and uh, that's a very, very difficult loss. Uh, it's going to take a long time to get over, but uh, you know, kids are resilient and I'm sure they'll get over it you know, pretty quickly and move on to the next thing. So give, your, uh, give some credit to uh, Crestview, no question. Uh, I think we had them down 17-4, to 9-0 early. And, they kept battling. I thought we got tentative in the second quarter offensively, and we only scored three points and kept them in the game. And, you know, they're a scary bunch. And when you keep them in the game like that, you know, we got off such a good start. But, uh, you know, you just give them a lot of credit because they're competitors, we're competitors. It's everything you want in a regional final, it just didn't go our way. You said tentative, but that's the most I've seen you stand in your offense that quarter ever. I mean, it just looked like it was. Yeah, and I don't, Sonny and I don't have a ton of answers for you on why that was. You know, we were trying to isolate Austin on the block because obviously he was being guarded by a guy six inches shorter, so maybe we were standing a little bit much in that regard. Second quarter, maybe I tried to run a few too many sets, so I'll take some blame there. Um, whatever it is, you're right, Sonny, we, we did stand in the second quarter. We didn't get offensive rebounds, you know, when we were missing, and we, we still had a lead at half. I think we were still up three at half, but uh, they had the momentum. And then after that, it was just nip and tuck the rest of the way. It also looked whatever they did to take this away from you. They didn't allow you to play big tonight. Didn't play big tonight, is that yeah. what you said? You, you know, for 6'8", six, 6'9", six, inside, they didn't allow that or took that away or something. Yeah, Sheets is a solid defender. Uh, he did a good job. I think Jack ended up with nine and Austin had six. You know, uh, especially Austin, you know, he's still young. Uh, he's just not going to sit on the block the whole time. He, he they, you know, he... He, he's a great player, and he can play all around for us, but he's still got a ways to go. He's going to be a stud. He's a great player, but you can't just sit him on the block the whole time because he can get moved even by small, uh, shorter guys. It's not all about height. You know, and in Jack's case, you know, they had a really good defender down there. That kid's good. I mean, so give them credit. On well, the play at the end, uh, did they give you any – because he question, unquestionably got pushed in the back while the ball was in the air. And if we were just talking about that, if the guy guts enough to make a call with five seconds, you ought to have the same. Five tenths of a second. Five tenths of a second. You ought to have the same uh, privilege at the end. You know, 
I, I don't know what the right thing to do is in this situation. I know what the right thing to do is, and I know what I want to do, but I'm just going to do the right thing here and say that we need to do, do a better job prior to that to not let it get in that situation. That's all I can say because we missed free throws. We were tentative on offense. We made some mistakes defensively. You know, we really shouldn't have been in that situation. So we got the benefit of a call or no call against Fort Recovery. And honestly, I think in both situations, you got to let them play. You got to let the kids decide the game. And one official decided to, and one official decided not to. He saw a foul. And you might be right. Tate might have got shoved in the back, but he decided not to call that one, so we got to live with it. Tate, did you feel it? No. No, it was clean. Hey, Coach, what was the, the five tenths of fuzzing on the rule in high school? Could you catch and shoot, or was it automatically after you tip in? No, he could have he caught it and made a play. He's got to be four tenths and over. You know, if it gets to three tenths, it's got to be a tip. We've run that play before. My first year, we, we with seven tenths, we hit a kid in the in the paint, and he made a shot at the buzzer to win. And you know, Tate, if Tate could have caught that ball cleanly, he would have had an opportunity to shoot it. So. It seemed like you guys were struggling a little bit with your shooting all night. I mean, missed some layups, missed from three. You know, a lot in the second half. Do you think it was you guys got a little bit out of sorts because their defense or lost? It's a combination of everything. I mean, as you said, we were stagnant offensively. They were very good defensively. They had a scout well. And we just missed some shots. You know, when those things happen, you got to get to the glass. And we just didn't get to the glass enough to get some second and third opportunities. And again, that you know, that, some of that credit goes to them as well. You kind of believe, though, that fate was good. Because Luke Coleman comes out and gets three huge shots to start the game with. Yeah, you know, absolutely. When you're up nine nothing, and 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 we were, I, I know, I'm pretty sure the score was 17 to four at one time, and we made a defensive mistake, and then it got to 17 to seven, and you know, as they started creeping back in the game, we got tentative, and you just can't do that in a big game. You just gotta let it go. But you know, hey, they're high school kids. Coach G got tentative as well. I mean, we were we were all feeling the pressure a little bit. That's what happens in a regional final. It's probably. It's the most pressure-packed game there is, more than, a, more than a state tournament game. It's, you know what's on the line, and I, I'll just take the blame for that because I don't think I did a great job in terms of fight, helping us fight through that. No, and uh, obviously game plan was not real good. I mean, we, we were going to really dig in and help on their post players, and, and they stepped up and hit big threes to start the game. And, and offensively, we struggled a little bit. But just to keep it within 13, not let it grow bigger than that, and chip it to three at halftime was huge. Our, our guys were gritty enough in the second quarter to get enough stops and, and keep us hanging around just to give us a shot in the second half. We basically only helped off a of one from then on. We were basically helping off of everybody except for 11. We knew coming in he was by far their best three-point shooter and then four steps up and hits three big ones in the first quarter. So now make Hess hit jump shots. We know how good he is at getting to the basket. Doesn't like to maybe shoot it as well from three. Just got to have a really good closeout on him because if you go too fast out there, he's going to blow right by us. But, you know, make one guy hit shots instead of multiple guys. And it, luckily enough, it worked. Basically, you know, you, you do this every day, but you know, step up and hit it. Let's go to Dayton. He never wanted to go like this, but like I said, I'm talking to my coaches after the game. I don't know how we won. How, how did we pull off enough plays to to get it done down the stretch? But. I just think we got a group of gritty guys that have no quit in them, and, and two Friday nights in a row, we've shown that. You don't like it to be that way, but you know I trust these guys. I trust that they're going to make the right play, and once again, lucky enough, we've made enough of them. You know, you've been coaching a long time. Do you ever get tired of the Russian roulette at the end of the game when the officials make the correct call on one end, and, and, and you don't know what they're going to do on the other end? It's tough. And I, 
No, I, and maybe in my complaining got us a call down the stretch. I don't know. But it, I, I wouldn't want to be them. You've you got a big game like it is. Both teams are very physical. And you've got to make a judgment on whether it's a foul. And you can't call every foul. You can't call every touch. And we know that. And, you know, lucky enough, we got a call down the stretch for, for Mitch to get to the free throw line. And I'll be honest, lucky enough, we didn't get a call on the catch down at the other end. It, it balances out over the, the course of the 32 minutes. But, you know, I, I wouldn't want to be them. I wouldn't want to have to do that job. I, I have all the respect for them in the world, what they had to do on a nightly basis, because every call you make, 50% of the, the arena is not for you. So uh, it was a big physical game, and luckily we got a call at the end to, to get us to the free throw line. The reality of it is your guy got a chance to win the game at the end. Their guy did not. Yeah, yeah, and like I said, lucky for us that we, we had a chance to get to the free throw line and get that. Thank you, Sheena. And I, I thought late in the first half, we got a couple possessions down to Ren, and he didn't back down at all. He, he missed his first one, got the next one, and, you know, they're in a little bit of foul trouble. So how aggressive are they going to be when you get it down there? But we, we trust our big guy. He, he's had a great season for us, for a sophomore to step up and play like he's played for us this year. We trust him to make plays down there. Well, just from Tuesday to Friday, I mean, he was more hesitant to attack A.J. Hatch one-on-one on Tuesday than he was to attack Kanapke tonight, and that's – I think athletically, he got it done tonight. A little bit quicker inside, quick burst to the basket. But, you know, he probably gets tired of us talking to him about it. But we, we tell him when you get the ball, it's 90% shoot, 10% kick it back out. And he's a little too unselfish sometimes. But great for him to get. And he got some big free throws. So he got, got him in foul trouble where he had to sit a little bit in the fourth quarter. And now we're playing one big against one big. Even when you play as well as he did tonight, were you surprised that their bigs were as ineffective as they were? Because they did. I, just on film, what we saw, what we were concerned about probably as much as anything was their offensive rebounding. We, we thought teams had done a pretty good job of not just letting them catch it and score. Not that they can't, but we, we thought that if we could keep them off the block a little bit and then get the offensive rebound, or defensive rebound because they're so good. Even when they don't get it, they tip it. They keep it alive. So we thought Nate, a little undersized, that we might have to dig a little bit more with them, but we thought Ren could do a good job one-on-one -on -one in the post. And for the most part, I thought we did a pretty good job. It means a lot. It means a lot to be the last part of the family that makes up on the wall. My sister made it to the state as a, for the girls team, and so does my cousin Reg, and so it, is, it means a lot to be the last person on the wall for us. Yeah, what was going to your mind? You look up, it's 13 nothing. very local. What was going to your mind at that point? We've done it before. My freshman year, we did the same thing. We played Delphi St. John's at Bluffton. We did it versus Audeville two games ago. I just felt like we had to keep on grinding away at it. You and Mesh are getting pretty close. A little bit, yeah. 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 <laughs>